and welcome to the BBPN Show. My name is Melissa Williams and I will be your guest host. We're going to have a great show for you, very informative, exciting, and fun. We're going to have dancers, singers, celebrities, yes, yeah, celebrities, rappers, producers, artists, entrepreneurs, and much, much more. So just sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the BBPN Show. I'm Melissa Williams, your host, and today I'm here with multiple jurisdictions prosecutor, James Butler. How are you? I'm very welcome well. Welcome to the show. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, so great to have you. I've been trying to get you on the show for quite a while. Uh, my schedule is kind of difficult, so, you know, we do what we, we, do what we can. I see. Uh, I'd like to start with um, asking you, how does crime affect the community? Well, uh, I've been a municipal prosecutor in Asbury Park for quite some time, and, and, and crime affects the community to the utmost because of the fact that when you have crime, you have fewer people coming into town. And it's, you know, we have a lot of restaurants in town, we have a lot of uh, shops in town, and we need people to come into town because those shops and those restaurants those provide tax actually right. sustain the town. They sustain the town. Right. And without those different types of stores, what we have, number one, is we don't have the rateables, and we don't have people coming to town, and then we don't have people who are even looking to move here because they're not coming to town to see how nice the town is. Even though it's a beachfront property, they're not coming to town to try to make an effort to, to buy here or to even eat here. So if the crime isn't managed somehow, it's going to wind up putting us in a situation that happened in Detroit where the town winds up having to file bankruptcy. And no, of course, file no bankruptcy. Wants, no one wants and, to And that. the town of Asbury is only like one square, square mile in either direction. Correct. So for such a small town, and we're a beachfront property, so um, you would imagine that people from New York and all over would want to come here, and we would be a thriving, a thriving town. They do, and they have started, but they need to continue. That's the problem. Asbury Park has to continue in their movement. The, the crime has to keep going down. I think it's going down some. It has to keep going down. We have to keep making inroads with respect to the crime, yeah. and then continue to bring people in. And we also have to get people in to sustain them, because we have some beautiful restaurants in town, and sometimes they want to close. And I just don't understand how restaurants with such tremendous food wind up closing. The reason being because of the fact that people are afraid to come into the city of Asbury Park at night. That's a problem. Do you think that when unemployment increases, that the crime, certain crimes increase in the area? Well, such that, as that's, a, that's always, there's no question. Whenever there's unemployment, there's always increased crime. Uh, I'm not going to say it's actually, because a lot of the people on unemployment are not to commit crimes, but it still doesn't, uh, unemployment uh, uh, affects the, 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 the lower echelon people because you can only do, you can get unemployment for one term then you get it for two terms you can get it right. for like two years mm -hmm. then after the two years then you're left for nothing mm -hmm. if you're left with nothing how do you eat and that's how you have to learn how there are other ways that you can you can do things in this town yeah you, you have to learn the wherewithal to get to the point so you can do that okay so we need to some of the things that even as an entrepreneur I've been submitting that we need to have alternative programs and continuity of care going on in, in our community. No question. You have you have some resources available. You have uh, social workers in the town who can help people do those things. We have a social worker in Asbury Park who works uh, together with the court. He can help, and, and there's many programs around it. They're there, but people don't know anything about it. And I think yeah. that part of the problem is is getting the word out. Uh, if you if you get absolutely. the word out to the community. More publicity, absolutely. If you can get the word out to the community, then at that point, then we, we're, we're halfway there. The word gets out to the community, maybe at some point in time we get some people employed, we get some people into training programs. We need to know about more training programs. Exactly. We need to um, find out um, how to, more education for people, um, money, um, you know, health resources. Exactly. Resource information is very vital. It is, and, and, and we also have to, we have to start training and explaining to children at a younger age. Yes. Because years ago, I used to, I used to uh, have programs that uh, we used to do, we used to go to, to, to the middle school, we, we'd go to uh, the elementary school, we go to the high school. And something happens between the elementary school and the high school. Okay. And that's the middle school. Mm -hmm. and crazy things happen in the middle school. Mm -hmm. Good things are not happening in the middle school. So we have to change that because that's where we lose a lot of our young people in the middle school. Absolutely, I agree with that. Now, what is the difference between, just so some of our young people know, what's the difference between a misdemeanor and a felony? Or do you even, 
know, how well, does see, that work a, a, a lot of people uh, think that they say, well, is, is this a felony? Is this a misdemeanor? We don't deal in misdemeanors or felonies in New Jersey. We just don't. Wow. We, we deal in, in uh, what we have in New Jersey is we have, we have a local town ordinance, which is called a borough ordinance or a city ordinance or a township ordinance. Okay. And then we have a petty disorderly person's offense, a disorderly person's offense. We have a fourth degree offense, third degree offense, fir uh, second degree offense, and first degree offense. Local ordinances are not crimes, okay? Petty disorderly person offense are crime. That's punishable by a maximum of 30 days in jail or $500 fine. A disorderly person offense is punishable by a maximum of a $1,000 fine and six months in jail. A fourth degree offense is, is a, a maximum of $15,000 in fines and 18 months in jail. Third degree offense is three to five years in prison, $15,000 fine. A second degree offense is between five and 10 years in prison and a first degree offense is between 10 and 20 years in prison. So we don't, and, and when you talk about a misdemeanor and a felony, there may be some things in New Jersey that may be a misdemeanor and, they, and, and may be a felony in New York. It's all a court, and, and that, that's that line. And I, I don't know the line of delineation because I don't practice law in New York, and I don't deal with, uh, with uh, misdemeanors and felonies. So it's a difficult scenario to give you an answer, but we don't deal in those, the, that, that terminology in New Jersey. We just deal with okay. those. And the other that. thing is that it doesn't matter if you are a juvenile considered under what age, 17 or under 18, considered a juvenile. 17, 18, 18 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. 17, uh, 17 years old, if you're 18, then you, then you go, you start with the big court. Okay. 17 and under. And, and the degree of the crimes are still the same. Absolutely. Even, even though you're, uh, you're in, in juvenile court and you have a shot, at least a better shot, of maybe trying to get that expunged to talk on what the nature of the charges are. When we're right, and I about wanted to talk about that. But what I wanted to say specifically is that whether or not you are under a certain age, you commit the crime, you're still going to go somewhere, whether it's juvenile hall. Doesn't mean because you are a, you know, a young kid that the judge is going to be more lenient because you're younger. That's, that's the, not how it works. That's the myth that everybody, and, and, and people who try to use the youth to commit the more serious crimes so that they don't get caught with the crimes, realize that it, it, it takes the juveniles a little more to get them to the point where they're going to Jamesburg but there still is a, uh, a punishment mm -hmm. for any for any offense that you do. There is a punishment. If you do the crime, you got to do the time. It may not be time the first time. It may not be time the second time. But there, there is a time that you will have to go to jail. You will have to go to the detention center. You will have to ultimately go to jail. That happens. And people also have to understand is that's the beginning of your criminal record. And, and that's only a start. You haven't even reached the age of 18 yet. Now, what do you say? I was running a program and a young lady said to me, um, you know what, I'm not, she said I'm not a, she, I guess she was being charged with theft and she said it was petty theft, but she said to me, Melissa, I am not a, I am not a thief. That's what she said. I'm not a thief, but what happened was I took some food or whatever, what happened, because I was hungry. What do you say to something like that? Now, I, I know what I'm thinking. Well, what I say to something like that is just, I understand why you had to do what you did, but it's still fast. Just excuse it. There's no excuse. It's just like if, if I'm speeding, if, if my mother's in the hospital and she's dying, and I'm flying to the hospital to get there, I can stop for speeding. Am I, is it any, am I guilty of speeding? Yes. If I stole something, am I guilty of theft? Yes. Is there some other way you could have done so that you didn't have to commit the theft? Absolutely. Yes. And that's what, because, you know what, as a single mom, there was a time when, you know, I had to feed my child. And I worked as a hairdresser. I didn't make much money. I had no, no transportation. And there were days when I, if it was snowing outside, I didn't make any money. I made like five, ten dollars that day because we got paid like a 50 50 commission split. Right. So I prayed every day that I would make money. But there was days when I got nothing and I didn't steal. But you know what? There's resources out there. You have, you know, people. You have relatives. You let them know you're hungry. You know what? Even sometimes you just. Uh, but there are resources out here. There are there are food banks. There are, there food are places banks. that you can eat. There are places you can go for food. There are places you can go for assistance. There are places you can go for some funding if you have a problem paying your rent. You Absolutely. can go to the churches. You can go to the towns. Absolutely. There's various different things out there. That, uh, Theft is not the remedy for anybody because if once you steal again, it's there. 
and, and then you have a record. And then you have stealing. a record. And, yeah. and that presents a problem with you later on trying to get a, a, a decent job. When you're trying to get a job and they realize that you have committed these thefts, and if it's any position of trust at all, then how are they going to be able to trust you in a position of trust if you've already committed the theft? Regardless of the fact of whether because you were hungry or whether or not because your children were hungry. I, I, I feel for, for, for anybody who goes through that and, you know, you grow up as you grow up. I grew up in the wonderful city of Asbury Rock Park. I grew up in the projects of Boston Way Village. That's where I grew up. I lived my first 10 years there. That doesn't mean that you have to live a certain type of life. You have to you have to always keep all avenues open, keep striving. That's what they have to do. There are alternatives to the nine to five. You can also do things on your own. There are some things that you can start. Every one of us has a skill and a talent. Um, no I don't question. care if it's going and, and doing housekeeping or cleaning. You know, asking one of these organizations, knock on the door, do you need your place clean? A salon, a hair salon. For that day, someone will say yes. Right. For that day, you have $20. That's right. You can now eat. So my next, uh, I wanted to get into expungement. Explain to me someone who has absolutely no idea the whole, how it works. First of all, there's, there's, certain, there's certain things that you cannot get expunged. There's a lot of first or second degree offenses that you can't get expunged. Uh, and you really can't get expunged a, a, a crime of violence because we have a thing in, in criminal law called the No Early Release Act. Which well, wait, I'm sorry, just to back up, what exactly does expungement mean? Okay, expungement mean? means, for, if, uh, for instance, that person who committed that petty theft, if she wanted to go ahead and get her record expunged, she would have to file, file a petition for expungement. She'd have to serve the Sheriff's Department, she'd have to serve the FBI, she'd have to serve the, the, the prosecutor's office, the town that happened. It's, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a so tremendous So expungement means getting rid of Getting rid of your, crime your, the crime off your record, getting rid of the, the, the fingerprints and the photos, getting all of that removed from your records. That's what, that's in essence what an expungement is. Okay, now where does, because I know some people have changed their last name, is that the same thing? Well, when you, when you do, no, when you do a petition for expungement, well, first of all, if you change your name, when they ask you when you change your name, you have to indicate that you're changing your name. You don't have any outstanding criminal record. You're not doing this okay. to defraud creditors or the like. Okay. You move to change your name. That's a different thing than getting all your right. record expunged. If you get your record expunged, then it's then it's off your record. But there's only, like I said, there's certain, uh, like you can get expunged a disorderly person's offense, okay. a petty disorderly person's offense, a local town ordinance, a, a third degree offense, and a fourth degree offense. Those you can pretty much get expunged. But... The, the interesting part about it is you have to understand is you can only get like one indictable offense and two municipal offenses. We don't want to get into the whole uh, no, uh, expungement, no. but, but basically an ordinance violation, a petty disorderly person offense, a disorderly person offense, a third degree offense, and a fourth degree offense. You can't get expunged under the right circumstances. Let's put it that way. Okay, and this is a long process. It's so about a... Does it cost anything? Yes, yeah, so it, it, it costs probably about $2,000 to get done. Wow. And, okay. and, but there is a packet online that okay. you can get. Okay. And uh, I know some. Do you I know, know where you can go get this packet? I don't know no. off the top we'll, of my head. We will try to post it. But but you can you can okay. you can get the packet for expungement. It's a it's a huge paper trail, and you just have to you have to know where you have to send everything. It can be done. It's easier to, to be done with an attorney. But you know who has two thousand dollars? They want to give to an attorney ultimately to do an expungement if you can get it done yourself. Now, I'm going to throw a little monkey wrench into this. Technology. The internet. I hate it. Okay. Um, anyone who's trying to, you know, get rid of their past or something that they've done, let me, let me say this. Google. Let me say social sites, social networking. Um, Google actually is like, they kind of like have footprints in the sand, you know, um, or in the mud. So wherever you've gone on the internet, which you pulled up, even if you've actually, you, you have a mugshot, they post it online. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but you know, if you go on, you, you'll see certain, you, if you pull somebody's name up, their mugshot will come up. Mm -hmm. As soon as you, you know, are in booking, they, it's like they, boom, right to the computer. So Google pulls up all this information. My thing is this, on social sites, a lot of people are on social sites, um, the, you know, Facebook, and, Instagram. Once Google has your footprint, expungement means what? Because now, you know, people that are going to, before they hire you, they can... Well, see, before they hire you, they're, they're going to do a criminal record check. 
And if you've got your record expunged, the criminal record check will show that you don't have a prior criminal record. But if they go on Google or Instagram or something and there's, see because if you move to get your record expunged, see, this whole computer age is a whole different ballgame. If you get an expungement, you get, you, that's why you do the FBI, the Sheriff's Department, prosecutor's office, the town, all that to get it all expunged and off of your records. However, there's no mechanism available to get it off of Google. There's just no, it's just that's no mechanism available. That's what I thought. Facebook that I know is there. Is it's there. It's there. It, it's, and, and at the time, it was legitimate. You did get arrested. So at the time, it was, so it's not like it's a lie. It was the truth, even though you got it expunged. And so I've never thought this out until right now, as a matter of fact. But if you, if you uh, uh, get your record expunged and then you go to a job and the job, uh, they uh, say, yo, you don't have a prior record, but I, I see here on Google that you were arrested for possession of marijuana. What happened with that? Uh, uh, it's not on your record. I don't understand why it's not on your record. How do you explain that? And you have to go tell them that you got an expungement and it's just a whole, so you wouldn't have to tell them anything. If you didn't do it in the first place. Correct. But that's easy for but, us to sit here and right. decide. But everybody deserves that one time, that one, that one bite of the apple. You, everybody deserves that. But although, I would say, you know, I'm going to say, although the internet is good and bad, okay, I'm going to look at the, the, the pros and the cons. We look at the cons, but I'm going to look at the pro on that. The person that is hiring you can actually see why you were arrested. Let's say it was for child support, or you know, um, maybe you had traffic violations. Okay, they can actually see where you're not actually a bad person, right? Because per se, you just sometimes we people can't make their child support payments. It is but, what it is. But the people who can't make their child support payments, people don't necessarily want to hire them either. And tell That's me why you say okay. That's Because I've seen that in the paper. Why? Why? Why is that? I think I just think because that's it's, it's too much paperwork to. No, no, it's not too much paper. It's just that they, if they're thinking to themselves, if this person not paying the child support, why do I want that person working for me? And, and but in essence, if you if he get, can't get a job, then he can't pay his child support. If this person has a job, so he can pay his child support. So it really is a catch twenty two. It shouldn't be a problem. But I'm just saying, with some employers, it is. It's like some employers don't even have a problem if you have a criminal record. Like, like we have a big program now called Drug Court, okay? okay. Where people uh, get arrested and they get on Drug Court. Drug Court helps them find jobs. Okay. And then if you, and then if, there's also the thing when you go to jail and you get out on, on ISP, which is intensive supervised probation. Again, you get out of jail. They help you find a job. There are plenty of jobs can around. Can you repeat that again? Can you say? Can you just say that again? It's yeah. called ISP. Uh, the, the, and what was the other one? The, the drug first court? one is Drug Court. Okay. Drug Court happens when the when the crime occurs. Okay, now they have a mandatory drug court for certain crimes, so you have okay. to make an application for drug court. It's a five-year program, and then you have to do certain things. You have to get a job, and you have to go to court, report to court once a week. If you go to prison for, as, as, for, as a result of an offense, then you can apply for a program called intensive supervisory probation. That is called ISP. And if you get into ISP, then you have to get a job. So there's plenty of people out here who are willing to hire people with criminal records, but what happens with People who have criminal records, is they get lazy, and they get and, and they get sidetracked. Like I know a guy who I personally represent him, who went to prison for robbery, and he had two jobs working for the state. Now, how do you have two jobs working for the state if you've been in jail for robbery? Okay, you can do it. It can be done, as I was indicating. When when people ultimately are incarcerated, there's a program called intensive supervisory probation. And what they, what they make you do if you get in this program is you have to get a job. And what many people do when they, when they, if they get out on ISP, some of them wind up starting their own businesses. Okay. I have a relative who, Absolutely. who went to jail, yeah. and he got out of jail, and he's never gone back. He's got he's a successful business person in this particular in this particular town. Uh, a, a guy that everybody would know, Don King. Don King is a boxing promoter with the wild hair, with the, with the, with the wild hair too. Yeah. Don King did like eight years for murder in, in prison. Don King became one of, the, one of the most one of the most one of the most prosperous boxing promoters of all time. I also know a friend of mine has another friend in California who did ten years uh, in prison in New Jersey, and he is a practicing lawyer in California, doing quite well. So wow. there is a means to an end if you you're willing to work. You can turn this around. It. You can turn okay. it around. You can change your mindset. Okay, take that intelligence that you have, and a lot of people are very super oh. intelligent that are, that have been. People are smart, and, and you know, there's a, there's a, there's a very thin line between being, 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 being bright and being criminal. 
Okay. I mean, it's a very thin line, and, and, and a lot of criminals are bright. That's, a lot of criminals, that's for another show. Right. Go ahead. A lot of criminals are not bright, but there are a lot of criminals who are bright. They're and, very bright. And they can, in fact, move on and start their own business and, and uh, make a better life for themselves by, by doing that. Self-taught, so, self self-teaching, and um, can take the time and apply. If you can apply um, you know, that knowledge to being self-employed, exactly. you know, there's a lot of people who own barbershops, landscaping companies, uh, cleaning businesses. And these, these are the businesses. And these that are businesses that you can start. do very easily. Absolutely. Very easily. It doesn't take. It doesn't take a lot of training. It's stuff that you learn how to do as you're growing up. You learn how to cut lawns. You, you learn, learn how, how to cut tree. hair. You learn how to cut hair. You learn how to how to clean houses. How to do your own clothes. You learn how to do all that stuff. So you can parlay that into a business if you just put your mind to it and take that that enterprise that you. Put all that, all that time and energy into trying Doing to do something these, illegal. illegal, put it to something legal, and then you won't have half the problem. Absolutely. And I'd like to thank you for coming on the BBPN show. This was a eye opener for me. What I'd like to know is um, if we can, if I can get you to come back on, but this time maybe doing a roundtable discussion. Sure. That'd be my pleasure. Okay. Thank you.